Hi there, and welcome to the course. This course will explain in depth the importance of asbestos awareness and how you can potentially keep yourself and others around you safe and sound. It will introduce you to the basics of asbestos, the different types and properties, and why asbestos is so dangerous. So without further delay, let's begin. Asbestos has been proven to cause life-threatening conditions such as cancer and potentially fatal respiratory disorders after long-term exposure. It is estimated that around 125 million people in the world have been exposed to the material and that it claims at least 107,000 lives a year. This has led to the banning of the substance itself in many countries around the world, including in the UK. But what exactly is asbestos? Asbestos is the generic term for fibrous mineral silicates and is an element that is mined from the ground all over the world. Like most mined substances, it was created by millions of years of formation within the Earth's crust. And what about the types of asbestos? Whilst there are actually six types of naturally occurring members of the asbestos family, the most common forms are known by their defining colours as well as their mineral names. They are chrysotile, also known as white asbestos. This is the most common form of asbestos and the most recognisable version. It consists of light-coloured wavy fibres, usually woven together and having the same consistency as a human nail. It was used in a wide variety of ways due to its strength. Amosite, also known as brown asbestos. This form is more needle-like in its appearance and usually associated with lagging and insulation. Crokidolite, also known as blue asbestos, a fluffier and softer form of the material. It was often used for coating rather than insulation. It should be noted that the colour of asbestos may not confirm which type it is, as it often takes on the surrounding colours from bonding and other nearby materials. Chemical confirmation will always be required. Asbestos has many useful qualities when it was used in manufacturing. It insulates against heat and electricity. It is fire, water and acid resistant. It is powerful and easily pliable. It is very light and bonds easily to other materials. And unlike most building materials, it does not degrade over time. Unfortunately, it is the very nature of asbestos that makes it harmful to the human body. The microscopic natures of the fibres means that the dust is damaging to the organs of the human body Due to the extensive use of the substance over the years and the incredible durability of it, it remains a hazard to all those that come in regular contact with it, no matter the age or context. Asbestos was significantly used in construction when fibres were mixed with other building substances to make commercial ACM, asbestos-containing material. The fibres can also be found present in some spray painting and cement, as well as in pipe lagging, fire-resistant clothing and materials, including safety curtains, roof and wall insulation, roofing felts, shingles and tiling, and strong ropes. For some time, traces of it could also be found in unlikely products like talcum powder, crayons, ironing boards, and even some alcoholic drinks. But despite being dangerous, why was asbestos so useful? The main reason for asbestos to be used in such a high extent in construction work was due to the natural heat resistance and strength. It was cheap, durable and didn't have to be treated before it was used to enhance its properties. The fact that it bonds easily with other materials and was plentiful also made it a highly profitable substance. Despite safety issues, by 1974 asbestos imports had peaked to around 170,000 tonnes per year. It is also estimated that during the 20th century, a total of 6.1 million tonnes of asbestos arrived in the UK, mined from around the world. So why is asbestos so dangerous? Let's look at it from a scientific point of view. Asbestos is hazardous to us, mainly because it is carcinogenic. That is, it has the potential to cause cancer. It can also have potentially fatal effects on the respiratory system. The majority of fatalities come from lung cancer, 
but seeing as the symptoms are almost indistinguishable from conditions caused by long-term smoking, the true impact is difficult to measure. Who's most at risk from asbestos? Whilst most people have been exposed to asbestos in very small and ever-decreasing amounts, the main risk comes to those who work in construction and engineering. Professions such as carpenters, builders, decorators, etc. could all be exposed to materials and ACMs with asbestos particles. Those that work in shipping, rail and machining may also be at risk. The danger comes from breathing in or swallowing the asbestos fibres. When the substance is in friable form, that is, it crumbles to the touch, it creates a fine dust that can easily lead to the microscopic particles becoming lodged within the lungs and internal organs. Once in the human body, asbestos cannot be naturally broken down or removed by your immune system. Therefore, the abrasive particles continue to cause damage on a long-term basis. This can lead to three types of illness, such as lung cancer, mesothelioma and asbestosis. Let's look at the three illnesses in detail. Lung cancer, the most common cause of fatalities due to asbestos exposure. This is caused by the carcinogenic qualities of the fibres being lodged in the lungs. It can also be exasperated by sufferers who smoke as well. Mesothelioma, a relatively rare type of cancer that affects mostly miners and textile workers. It attacks the membrane lining of the internal organs. Asbestosis. This is a respiratory disease caused by the presence of asbestos in the lungs. It leads to disabling breathing problems and can subsequently result in cardiac failure. Now that you know how asbestos can be harmful to humans, you should know where you can typically find asbestos in the UK. According to the Health and Safety Executive, HSE, any building or structure that has had some construction or renovation work performed on it prior to 2000 may hold traces of asbestos or asbestos-infused material. This can most commonly be found in the following situations. Loose asbestos in cavities where it has been used as insulation, lagging around pipes and boilers, sprayed coatings, sometimes known as limpet asbestos, insulating boards used in partition walls and ceiling tiles, floor tiles and linoleum, textiles, textured decorative coatings such as Artex and some types of paint, asbestos cement products such as pipes, building sheets and roofing, and other building materials such as ropes, paper, felts, coated metal, sealants, bonding agents and reinforced plastics. Let's look at some common types of asbestos material in detail. They were used prolifically in the UK prior to being banned. Lagging, possibly the most recognisable form of asbestos material. These were thickly laid around pipes and boilers to prevent heat loss. They have been known to consist of almost 100% asbestos fibres. Spray coating, sometimes known as limpet asbestos. It was a mixture of cement and asbestos fibres, sprayed directly onto structural beams and girders. This was to fireproof the interiors of buildings and also had the effect of soundproofing. Insulating boards, sometimes known as AIBs. These were made by mixing cement or calcium silicate with asbestos fibres. This provided fire-resistant insulation within walls as well as partition sections and ceiling tiles. Asbestos yarn, used to strengthen rope and provide packing material, mostly used to create fireproof clothing and materials, also used in ceramic fuse holders. Asbestos millboard and papers, paper-based material infused with asbestos to give it extra insulation when used with electrical equipment and circuitry. Fibre cement, containing between 5-15% to asbestos fibres, this form of cement was known for its brittle but durable qualities and often used for outdoor pipes and waterproofing. Fire bricks were also made from this substance. Floor tiles and bitumen felts. Bonded with asbestos fibres, these were strong and durable. Sealants, adhesives and putties. Contained asbestos fibres so that they could be effectively used in hot water systems and boilers. Reinforced plastics. 
the addition of asbestos fibres meant additional strength, which was useful for cisterns, handles and electronic equipment housing. Textured paint and coating, sometimes found in Artex and other decorative coatings, with the asbestos providing stability and extra binding qualities for patterning. Now comes the question, how to actually identify asbestos in the UK? As many structures could viably still contain traces of asbestos and or ACMs, aka asbestos containing material, it is vital that some kind of investigation is undertaken when performing any kind of restoration or demolition on properties built before the year 2000. In order to identify any hazardous substances, you will need to know what products to investigate, check the date of the building and materials to see if any predates 2000, Check the joints on the outside of a building. Asbestos sheets often use aluminium runners and small nails. Check surface patterns. Asbestos cause dimples and crates to appear on surface materials. Check exterior building materials, especially older concrete cement boards. Check interior panels. An oily or dusty tile may indicate the presence of asbestos. Look at appliances and manufactured pieces such as ducts, flues and window putty. Thoroughly investigate rooms that are more susceptible to the use of asbestos. Bathrooms and basements may contain sealants with ACMs. Look for manufacturer labels. The letter codes AC will confirm the presence of asbestos, whereas NC proves it's not present. Also look for the presence of bar or QR codes that can be scanned by a smartphone for further information and consult experts to analyse samples. If there is any concern whatsoever, a qualified surveyor or UK health and safety representative should be contacted with details. That's it for this lesson. We hope you now have a clearer picture of why asbestos should be the number one concern if you are handling materials that might contain it. Do rewatch if you need to and see you in the next lesson.